Okay, so we'll just give it one more minute and then we'll make a start. Um, if you have a look in the Zoom chat, you should be able to see a link that you can click, um, which will allow you to um, get a digital post-it note on your screen and you can just send in your name um, or where you're from. Um, and we will be using this feature to gather some questions um, as we go through. Okay, we'll make a start. So um, I'm going to start off with uh, just introducing myself and I'm going to introduce uh, my co-presenter today as well. So my name is John Knight. I am the Managing Director of Ascente. Uh, Ascente are GoBrights UK distributor. Um, and today we're going to be focusing on how GoBright can safely enable uh, a return to the workplace. So I'm delighted to introduce Chris from GoBright. Chris, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Chris. I have a very difficult last name, but it's something like Wiegeraad in Dutch. So um, I'm commercial director of GoBright, and uh, I'm very happy to, to be in this webinar today and to meet you in this impersonal way. But uh, yeah, let's make it a good time together. Thank you for, for watching this webinar. Thanks, Chris. Um, so we also have a couple of other uh, co-presenters who you probably won't be hearing from today, but one of them is our content guru. Um, so Simon, uh, who's <laughs> Chris loves that. Um, would you mind sharing the content in, please? Thank you very much. Um, so just a quick reminder, um, there's that link in the Zoom chat um, that you can use. Um, I think Simon's also going to click on the QR code. There is a QR code at the top of the screen. Um, so we're going to be using this feature to ask you if you've got any questions as we go through the content. Um, webinars, unfortunately, don't allow that much interaction with everybody. So um, this is a way of us trying to capture your questions and your feedback. Um, so you can either uh, scan this QR code um, or you can uh, click on the link that we put into the Zoom chat. Uh, and that will enable you to send in questions um, as we go through. Um, and for those of you who have used it, uh, you'll see your names um, appear on the screen in a second, um, just to show you that your responses have been coming in. Um, so with that introduction, uh, I think we'll move on to um, the main content. So Simon, could we scroll along please? So the the first um, point that I wanted to pick up on with Chris was um, that GoBright is not a platform that's been created based upon the current crisis that we're all going through with uh, the COVID-19 virus. Um, it was around for many years before. So Chris, the first question I had for you was, um, what were the trends that you were seeing in the market before the virus took place that um, led you to create the GoBright platform? Yeah. Well, I joined the company in 2017, in January. Uh, before that, I was uh, for five years in the market of office furniture, actually. Uh, and there we saw the introduction during the formal financial crisis, mainly, of uh, the new ways of working. And that means that with the improvement of the technology, people don't have to go to work, actually, to go uh, to work to work. Because with your laptop and, and a good Wi-Fi connection, you can work anywhere you like. So um people it attended to go to the office uh, to work together and uh, for example to meet your colleagues in a meeting or uh, to um, receive your clients or other guests um, so that mean that's also the demand in the office environment was changing there was more need of meeting rooms instead of personal workspaces for example um, and also the demand of uh, making the meeting rooms available to everybody because not only secretaries were booking meeting rooms, but everybody was doing, doing it himself uh, these days. So the demand of um, tools or uh, technology to, to uh, manage these processes is increasing. And GoBright started to develop this solution in 2016. Uh, when I joined, the, it was finished, and then we started to build up the channel uh, with our districts, uh, which were you obviously one of uh, for the UK. So that was the big trend. We meet instead of only work in the office. 
Okay, that's great. And um, what have you seen change since um, COVID has taken place? What, what what's what started to um, change your thinking, or, or what impacts are you seeing that COVID is having on your discussions generally around Go Bright? Yeah. So this, this new ways of working, these introductions started in the Nordics, in the north of Europe, and slowly moving downwards to the south. So the Netherlands embraced very quickly. Germany is still a little bit uh, uh, opening up right now. Um, but uh, there, there's still a lot of organizations who won't allow their uh, co-workers to work from home. They, they demand that they go every day into the office. Um, and this process is speeded up tremendously because... Uh, while we are actually in the lockdown in several countries, we are obliged to work from home. So all these organizations who didn't want uh, this process are now forced to do that. And it will open their eyes that the technology is, is that improved, um, that it's either good for the company and also for their em em employees to let people work maybe in a hybrid model that you sometimes work from home and sometimes are in the office. So the process now is speeding up, actually. Okay. Excellent. So Simon, if we could just move along a bit. Um, one of the initial uh, sort of responses that we've seen a lot of uh, people considering is some of these types of devices. Um, we, we're looking at these devices as well. Um, so temperature scanners, uh, people counters, um, hand sanitizers. Um, and we're not suggesting that these aren't part of a potential consideration for return to work. Um, but just to give some context, um, how do you see GoBright um, um, yeah, at a general level um, increasing the um, safety elements of the return to work uh, in conjunction with products like this? Well, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of products which are now uh, dropped on the market and the ones you show are very into tech on the tech side, but they're also uh, all kinds of analog solutions like uh, hand sanitizers, uh, just a pump with some fluid in, or uh, maybe some uh, plastic screens which you can behind. Um, but the thing is, a lot of these things are standalone and not manageable. They don't uh, give you any data or insights, so they're just precautions, but you, you cannot manage and you cannot leverage. So uh, in the end, you don't know if it's effective. And I think that it's very important that the measures you take, you can also uh, uh, get the insights of it. What does it do and how can we upscale or downscale or how can we um, uh, have data in which we can comply to? So that's an important thing. Um, with all these, all these things you can do within your office environment. Yeah, I mean, I suppose what we're sort of seeing generally is that this is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle that uh, organisations need to try to put together. Um, just so that everybody is aware, um, the, the UK government have released um, different sets of return to work guidelines. Uh, the one that we have on screen here is specifically for offices and uh, contact centres. There are other ones that have been created for other markets like retail, for example. Um, so one of the things that, that we at Ascente have done is we've gone through these guidelines and we've created um, a detailed summary of how GoBright can support uh, these guidelines. But the purpose of today's webinar is to not go through these guidelines in detail. Um, it, um, it, it's to allow you to um, um, understand how uh, the overall solution can help you to design a solution that's appropriate for you. So if we just move along um, to uh, this next section. So the, the four kind of key themes that we're going to try and focus on today um, are uh, these four on the screen here. So we're going to talk about social distancing, which is um, a, a new phrase that uh, back in February of this year, I, I don't think anybody had put those two words together. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about cleaning and hy uh, hygiene um, within the office environment. Um, as Chris has already mentioned, uh, we're going to focus on data and measurement uh, and also uh, how ultimately the platform can enable you to manage your workplace uh, and very much try and focus on how you can um, ensure your workplace is a safe and flexible workplace moving forwards. So if we just move along to the first section of social distancing. Um, 
So Chris, what are the key elements of the, the GoBright platform that uh, enable social distancing to take place? Yeah, well, first of all, if you um, give your people the, the possibility to book a desk up front, uh, and it's obliged to do that, for example, then you can make sure that not too many will attend to the office because you're only are allowed in if you have a reservation for a workplace, for example. And that could be very easily managed with, for example, the mobile app on your mobile phone, which you see there in the, in the corner. Um, and um, to make sure that you have enough distance between one another, we can also make some desks non-bookable. So, for example, you have 100 desks uh, and you say, OK, we will only allow 50 people into the office. Then we, uh, in the settings of the solution, we make 50 desks non-bookable. So that means if, if the number is reached that people, that 50 people make a reservation, then it's not possible that 51 will come in. And second of that, they can only book desks which were, are in a, enough distance from one another, like you see in the picture in the left upper corner. Okay, excellent. And let's just talk about occupancy um, in terms of actually managing the occupancy. Um, what, what strategies are you seeing around this at the moment? Well, the, the thing is um, um, it, to, to make sure that people have enough distance, you should calculate yourself how many people you want to let go into the building. Um, for, and at the same counts for meeting rooms, for example, if you did have meeting rooms which uh, were suitable for 20 people, uh, now probably you should only allow to let 10 in. Um, so what will happen is that you take out 10 of the 20 chairs, you place them um, uh, uh, on a safe distance from one another, and then in the settings of our solution, uh, where you normally look for a room for, for 10 people, you now get actually a room for 20 people. So uh, that's, that's how you manage the right people in the right environment. And by using sensors, we can actually also measure. So how it's been used, who was there, uh, and these techniques together make sure that you're able to get the right uh, occupancy and that it's also visible to everybody. And just on that, that point of um, managing your meeting occupancy, so we've got a, uh, an example here of the fact that you have an Outlook plugin um, that people can book meetings through um, the uh, web browser portal as well. Um, and this is where they can choose the resources that they want or the number of people. Um, and that, that point around managing the number of people that come into a meeting room, that can be adjusted over time. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, because in the settings of our solution, you can you can say, okay, this room is suitable for 20 people and this one is suitable for 10 and that one for five, for example. So yeah, just based on the, the, the fact how many chairs you will leave in place, you can adjust these settings. Uh, and that's how you can use this technology very easy and very quick to, to scale your organization. For example, also, if you decided to make half of the desks available, and after a few weeks or months, you say, okay, we, let's allow more people into the building because it's getting better, of course. Then you can just easy scale up and say, okay, let's make another 10 or another 20 bookable so that we can allow more people into the office. And this is actually something you can do as a, as a user of the solution, as an administrator, you can do that yourself. So you don't need you as a distributor, you don't need us as the manufacturer. It's just manageable by the customer himself. Yeah, and so so what we're basically saying is that is that the organisation can use this platform to create the uh, the different maximum levels that they're happy working to, but then you put the power of the booking in the hands of the users. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this and the same counts that if you if you're making your booking for a meeting room, for example, by these. Um, Outlook plugin, then you're also able to pre-register here your visitors, for example, which are coming from outside. Then obviously you know who's coming in, uh, when, when, when they will come in, uh, and you also know in what meeting room they will attend. Um, and the beauty of the solution is that a, a day before or two days before the meeting will happen, these uh, guests will get an automatic, automatically remembrance email of, hey, thank you very much that you come to us to uh, visit, well, visit us in one or two days. Uh, and that's a template email, by the way. 
And in that template, there's also a QR code. So as I come in as a visitor, I just scan my QR code on this kiosk on the reception area. And my host will get a text message that I'm downstairs so they can pick me up. So there's no touching, there's, there's a very quick process, no queuing lines in the reception area. Uh, and as a user, you only have to fill out the plugin. So it's very easy to do. It, it don't cost you a, a, a lot of time. Uh, you don't need to use any, all kinds of di uh, different solutions. It's just coming from this Outlook plugin. Yeah, and uh, Simon's just putting an example up there of that email with that QR code. So. Yeah, the user, uh, the visitor, sorry, receives this. They can scan the QR code. They're pre-registered into the building. Um, the company knows that they're coming. Uh, as you say, it's a contactless experience. Um, and because this is template driven, um, they, the, the organization can also provide details about the other safe measures that they're putting in place to ensure that those visitors that come to their building understand the, uh, measure, the other measures that have been put in place around um, supporting a safe environment, correct? Exactly. Yeah. So everything you want your visitors to know, you just put in this template. There could be directions, that could be behavior in the building, for example. Um, that could be the fact that you want to identify them. I don't know what, what's just what you want to put in. You can, you can leave it here. So um, it's a great solution, I guess. And then we've also heard a lot about creating kind of traffic lines within buildings where people are asked to walk in particular directions. So we've got two other examples here of uh, an inter uh, uh, a map um, of the building, uh, which can obviously be for as many floors um, as the organization has, uh, and then also some what digital wayfinding. So these are these are other elements within the platform that would enable um, organizations to plot people's route through the building is that correct yeah so so pre-covid um we have a flexible workspace so people can move around everywhere they like and everywhere they want so the system was originally designed that you can see uh, if a desk is available or a room is available by the green and the red light and it could be on a screen that could be on a, a room door panel but also on the desk itself you can see on the right on the right side of the presentation um, but now these days, post COVID, we like to have people come in the building, go straight to their work spot and, and keep as much as possible, stay there. You don't want to move, want people to move everywhere around. Um, so one of the great things of not using plastic stickers or whatsoever is that people cannot remove it. There are always people who, 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 who peel off stuff and think it should be different than that their uh, um, um, employer decided to. And these electronics, you, you, don't, you don't pull away. Uh, and on this mapping, for example, it's very easy to find your colleague. So uh, at the moment that you say, hey, it's now 10 o'clock, within an hour, I have to meet my, uh, my colleague, where is he or she? Then you just put in the name on the map uh, and, and the workspace that this colleague particular is at the moment, start blinking. So you can see, hey, there is, there's my colleague. Uh, I go straight there. Uh, um, uh, and in the fact that um, mainly sometimes it's also possible to set yourself in a do not disturb mode. Um, if you just look for your colleague and there's on the, on the third floor, for example, and, uh, and the display says, well, he's there at the desk, but they don't want to be disturbed. Then it doesn't make no sense to go there. So it's, it saves you the travel, but also the, uh, it keeps you safe on your own work spot. So there are a lot of possibilities by using these kinds of technical solutions. And uh, we've just had a question come in specifically about the map. Uh, it says, can you change the map to show any routes to desks if a one-way policy has been put in place? So yeah. um, we, we talked, uh, we haven't actually talked about this yet, but just to make that very clear, the maps can be updated very, very quickly um, and you can apply um, routes over the top um, um, of the map. Um, yeah, so Simon's just talking about embedding arrows onto the map. Um, we also haven't mentioned that that idea of introducing hand sanitizers, you could put things like hand sanitizer stations, for example, onto the maps so that people know where they can go to access the hand sanitizers as well. Are there any other examples that you've heard of, that, uh, of, of things that people want to do with maps to improve visibility of information with, uh, with COVID? Yeah, and also pre-COVID, uh, uh, fire distinguishers, for example, so that you can put on a map. So what you see here on this particular map, it's a very 
e simple one and because we are fully concentrated on the bookable meeting rooms and the bookable desks. So the only thing you can change here is the bookable stuff. But you also see some doors which, which open. So that's the line drawing. And in that line drawing, you can also put your arrows, for example, uh, and make sure what the route is that, that you have to go. Uh, and you can also put in, for example, um, uh, a medical kit where, where, uh, and a fire extinguisher. Uh, it's, it's, it's everything is possible on this map. Yeah. And um, we had one other question earlier, which was, is there a way GoBright can help the access to the office, i.e. lifts and stairs, et cetera? So identifying where the lifts and stairs are. So this would be one example of how people could identify those. Um, yeah. Um, we will introduce our signage solution. That's the fourth tier uh, in July. So I guess half, half July, we will also have a digital signage from the same platform. And uh, you can basically put any kind of information on any kind of screen. So you're, you're free to, um, to do that. Um, what a solution for today could be, if people have a reservation for a desk and, the res and you come in with your reservation and it shows, for example, well, I have a desk at the second floor, that at the elevator, there's a little screen which says, okay, if you go to the second floor, take elevator one. If you go to the third floor, take elevator four. So it's, it's very good to route people into the right elevator because then they go quick up straight away to their right level, you know? And, and uh, just on that note, the GoBright platform is fully modular, isn't it? So people can choose which parts of the platform they want to use, is that correct? Yeah. So pre-COVID, we saw that people started mainly with the uh, desk book, uh, sorry, with the room booking. And from out of the room booking, they eval evaluated to the desk booking, for example, mapping. Um, and also the other solutions that we have, for example, the integrated catering and services module or whatsoever. What we see now post-COVID is that mainly people start with the app uh, because they want to have the desk booking fixed. So it changed fully from, from room booking to desk booking. Uh, and together with the app, they use this mapping because together with these two, two tools, you get people very directly into their office, into the right space, and it always shows you the actual situation. Uh, that's why we do this mapping uh, in the office itself. Once you come in, you see the first thing you see is the actual situation. Yeah. So I want to come on to talk about desk booking specifically. So we've got some examples on over here of the actual desk booking hardware. Uh, which is optional, as you said, uh, people can start with just the software and the app. Um, but the advantage of the desk booking hardware is that it provides this uh, live visibility. And I want to come on to just talking about that in relation to cleaning uh, as our next topic. So you, you see here examples of the um, desk booking uh, modules being green for available, uh, red for um, in use. Um, there is also an orange status, which means that it's been booked, but the person has not arrived yet, not checked into the desk. Um, and you talked earlier about the do not disturb status, um, which is a blue light. So these are four lights that are currently available with the desk booking hardware. But now, Simon, if we could just scroll along to the cleaning section um, and just talk specifically about um, desk hygiene. Because we've had a question around this uh, uh, as well, which was post COVID. Do you expect hot desking to carry on being a viable strategy? So I'm guessing that that's somebody asking whether the idea of hot desking can work. Um, and let's just talk about that because this is not, although before COVID this was often used for hot desking, with COVID we're now not necessarily talking about hot desking, are we? No, it's not, it's not necessarily hot desking, but on the other hand, um, uh, we have we had a, the first wave of COVID now, and it was not that particularly long. It, maybe in the UK it came a little later, and it it leaves a little later. But here in the Netherlands and in other parts of Europe, we see that business is is, is going back on on normal level. Um, but the thing is that organizations are still harmed. So we now hear every day some organizations who are letting people go because they didn't have enough business for the last few months. Um, so the economical damage will be visible uh, the coming weeks or the coming months. So cost saving is a very, very important issue to everybody of us because we all, we all suffered from, from, from this crisis, right? So if you can save office space, it's still very important. 
because if you if you can save this rent or or you don't have to buy extra space it it's it still stays a very important topic especially in the big cities because there is office space of course very expensive and these kinds of solutions will help you either if it's covid or not to make sure that if you attend to a workspace uh, and it's not your own because what we see is that mainly you have one desk for two people there is a form of sharing anyway and and if you want to come to the desk you really want to know if it's clean or not and i know this is a high-end solution but it's also the only solution which i know which is currently available worldwide to to make sure that you can see actually on the status ring of our connect unit it says for example now it's it's purple and that means that it's not only on the connect itself but also on the mapping what you see on the right side you see some desks up there which are currently used that are the red ones you see the green ones these are free you see the gray ones they're non-bookable and then some of them are purple and that means well they have to be cleaned so it could be also the you desk it, it could also be the desk you have booked for example and then you you come up to your desk and you think hey i start working uh, and normally if you don't have this visible uh, uh, um, hardware then you don't know obviously but now you know and then you can say okay i first want to have my desk cleaned or instead of the one i booked i take another one which is free uh, so and let's, ju let's just talk about that status so how how does that purple light become activated okay so normally when you go to a desk it goes red and when you leave the desk either by checking out or by leaving too long it will return to green so it's available again but now in these if you want to use this feature it will from red it will return to not to green but to purple and that means that somebody of the cleaning staff should first clean that desk and they only have access with their specific nfc or rfid reader to release the desk again to its normal mode yeah so, so we haven't we haven't talked about that that this desk hardware also has an nfc and rfid uh, reader built in um, and therefore um, that can link to the uh, specific cards that the cleaning staff have um, but also another thing that we haven't uh, mentioned is um, that uh, as well as making this visible at the desk and on the interactive map um, it, it also makes it visible to whoever is in charge of the cleaning as well correct exactly so in, in mainly in larger offer buildings there will be people present who who clean doorknobs for example coffee machines everything which has been touched there will be sometimes uh, some moments during the day and these people can also check the map and check the connects to see hey on this particular part where where i'm right now there is some uh, space uh spaces who needs to be cleaned so i just clean these desks and if they've done that then they release the desk again with their specific rfid uh, tag or, or card they are the only ones who can do that so if your co-workers come to that particular desk they are now absolutely sure that the desk is cleaned and uh, this is a comfort you give to your people that's that's a very important one because we talked about social distancing and the clean environment makes sure that they feel safe and if if people feel safe they will also be probably um, willing to return uh, in the netherlands we see um, companies opening up but not everybody will, wants to return uh, we see churches opening up but not everybody wants to go back because they they don't feel safe actually um, yes. uh, so how do you get your personal back while the government is still yelling hey you should work from home you should work from home but you as an employer want to have your people back in the office so if you can give them the comfort that it's fully safe, uh, these kinds of solutions can help you to make sure that people dare to return. Okay, so we need to move on because of time, but just a couple more points around this. Um, the, uh, this uh, what you're looking at here of uh, making desks non-bookable, this is part of the UK government's return to work recommendation in their guideline document because um, it avoids uh, people sitting too close to each other or sitting opposite each other. Um, but of course, by reducing the number of desks that are available to be booked, um, it, it introduces this challenge over how you allow those, those desks to be booked and how you uh, avoid um, too many people arriving in the workplace. So you know, if we link this theme of social distancing with the challenges that this creates, by making desks bookable, even just initially through a software application and through the app, 
it enables you to manage your occupancy um, and manage the number of people that are coming in as well as also your cleaning as well. Yep. So just want to move on because um, ultimately, you know, Chris, we've talked about this and, and these are precautions. Um, so what, what do we do? Uh, what happens if uh, people were to, uh, for example, catch the virus? Uh, in the UK, um, organisations, uh, sorry, the UK government has introduced a system called Track and Trace um, to try to encourage um, um, members of the public on a voluntary basis um, to uh, use the app. But from an employer's perspective, um, this leads in, into the conversation around data and, and uh, making data visible. Um, so can we just talk about that? Um, you know, uh, what, what does this data give people? Sorry, what's the question? What? What, does, what, what, what type of data is available to organizations that are using the GoBright platform? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the analytics that you see here is not accessible to everybody, so not to the normal user, but it's for the administrator, of course. And they can make uh, several reports of all assembled data. So, for example, first of all, you see here the occupations top 10. This is not so relevant in the discussion that we're in right now because this only shows you what the most booked rooms or desks are and the least so that you can draw your conclusions from that. Um, but what's very interesting is if we go to the right, uh, Simon, yes, one further here. Here is, you, for example, now I can see uh, on the third line that Andrew George is at desk one, you see, and that was on the 5th of June between 8.30 and, and 1600. So if Andrew becomes affected, then we can see in the same data who was also on the same floor uh, in the area of his desks. So it's not something that you do constantly all the time because it doesn't make sense to do this. But if somebody gets affected, then you are able to warn your colleagues and say, hey, maybe you should get tested because this particular day you were in the same area as Andrew. So, yeah, you could be affected or whatsoever. So maybe you want to take a test. And this, this can also link into uh, meeting bookings as well. So if Andrew went to a meeting, we'd obviously know which meetings he attended and who with. Um, the... Um, the other thing is that this uh, helps the organization to understand the actual usage of their building um, in order to either increase or decrease the availability of desks um, in a very flexible way. Um, so rather than just listening to complaints from staff saying that they can't come in because they haven't got a desk, the organizations will have access to this data, won't they? Yes. Uh, Simon, if you want to scroll to the left, then we see the, the color, the colors, for example. Yes, here it is. So this is this is an occupancy report, and let's say you, you you only select your desks, and you want to know okay if we opened up let's say 500 of the 1,000 desks, how many people are using it, and if you have an occupancy occupancy rate here of 100%, then you know that every day 500 people are in. Actually, what we normally see that was post COVID is that if people have a 100 desks, for example, the average occupancy rate is 30 to 40 percent. And that's rather high. So that means that almost every organization has way too much desks. They don't use it in the end. And that's because people leave their stuff on, on a desk, for example. They, they start working in, uh, somewhere else in the building and they only use it for an hour a day, but they're actually not there at the rest of the time. So you, here, here's a tremendous lot of savings uh, to catch. On the other hand, uh, you can see how much it is occupied. So let's see if you have one week or two weeks 100% bookings, then you can decide if everything goes well or the third week to say, hey, uh, let's open up another 100 and see what happens. It's just by setting the, the uh, adjust the settings and that's it. You don't have to do not very complicated stuff to, to, to arrange that. So by, by having access to this type of data, um, I just want to talk about some of the things that this enables organizations to consider. Um, so are there any particular examples that, that you've heard of where organizations want to encourage a return, a safe return to work, but um, they're looking at ways that are going to, to want to monitor or manage um, the workplace. So yeah, an example that I'll give you uh, is maybe shutting off a floor within a building. Mm -hmm. um, if you had four floors, there's no need to have all four floors open. We're going to shut off one of those floors just to reduce 
um, the lighting bills, the electricity bills, the cleaning, um, and give us a, a smaller, more manageable workplace. So uh, are there any other examples that you've heard of? Well, what you particularly described is, is mainly in a normal situation, because if you see on a, on a uh, Wednesday or a Friday, there are mainly less people in the office, so you close down a, a floor, for example. Now, on the other hand, you need the space because you have to have social distancing, right? Yeah, so it could be that you, that you open up. It's more that the discussion now is, okay, where are my people? What floor are they actually using? Why does everybody go to the second floor, for example, and only 30% of the fourth floor is used? You get these insights, you can start yourself questions, and you can also ask your colleagues questions. Hey, what's happening? What's the behavior? Why are we doing this? Um, and that means that it becomes manageable. Because, for example, if I do a soap dispenser at the entrance, I don't know how much people use it. I don't have any control. I just provide it. Uh, with our solutions, you don't only provide it, you can also manage it. And that, that makes it very interesting. Yeah, and just on that point um, of other devices, you, the platform does have open APIs, so um, companies can integrate other uh, platforms into the GoBright platform. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, uh, our solution is designed that we are fully independent. Uh, we, we do software, we use third-party hardware, but we uh, do still some more and more integrations with facility management platforms. Uh, for example, to connect also to the catering and services situation. Um, we also connect to device management solutions. Um, we also to connect to different sensoring solutions. There's, we have our own sensors, but there are also different sensors who work at a different level. Um, so that we try to adapt as much as possible to the current situation in the current office environment. Yeah, and, and obviously the conversation around what third-party devices or um, sensors or uh, other hardware needs to be integrated is a, a conversation with each individual organization. But if you have anything in mind, um, by all means, either send in a question to us uh, now or feel free to follow up with us afterwards. Um, so I just want to try and start wrapping up what we've been talking about. So the whole point of uh, what we've been talking about is to uh, give organizations the ability to have a manageable workplace. Let's just talk about the analog options versus digital. And we have a, um, a simple example here of, um, you know, somebody putting a sorry, we're closed sign on a chair. So um, what, what's your perspective on um, uh, analog solutions uh, versus digital uh, and is there a place for both yeah i guess because a lot of those analog solutions which you see come across linkedin for example every day they're very good ones actually which could very be sufficient only what i already mentioned i i could take this close sign away i could just shove it in my bag and and sit there so what's happening then so you cannot manage it uh, on the other hand another thing is if you go to the bathroom for example or the restroom how, how do you know anything, what's happening inside before you go in? I don't think there will be analog solutions to manage that. Or how do I know if I can go safely to the, to the office restaurant, for example? So you, if you want to do that analog, you should have somebody there who's saying, okay, you are allowed in and uh, well, somebody's going out. So the next one can go in. You will probably have large queues up there. You don't want to gather people together. So queues are not allowed actually. Uh, and I think that what you've seen today from the solutions that we showed you is that you also can manage this. Just a little screen outside your restrooms, which says, hey, one and two are free and the third one is occupied. So it's safe to go in because, or the other end, hey, all three are occupied. So don't go in. You don't have to be there. You know, you just have to wait. So the same is for the restaurant. If you make the, the restaurant tables bookable, then you have a time slot for yourself. You know what time you go for lunch and you know your, your, your space is free. So... It's a total big difference to have uh, technical solutions instead of the analog solutions, and they can fit together very, very well. Yeah, and, and um, obviously there are other options for some of the things that you've described as well. I know, for example, some people are considering just a, a people counting solution for a canteen, for example. So you know, I think the idea of having um, uh, bookable sections within the canteen is one option. Another option is people counting, but it's still the principle of having a digital platform to manage the workplace versus just putting analog signs, 
sticky tape on the carpet, um, you know, um, printed uh, content. Um, well, all of those things are preventative, but they're not going to give the organization any data, are they? Exactly. Exactly. It's just precautious. So that, that's a good thing because uh, it's better to precaution than to get sick afterwards, right? But um, yeah, you just have to wait and see what happens. So that's, I just that's want to good. finish off. Sorry, Chris, go on. No, no, that, that, that's it, actually. I just want to finish off, uh, just on the right-hand side there, we have an example of the portal. Um, so as well as having an app, um, there is a portal available um, that, that um, allows any user to search for rooms, desks, or colleagues. Um, and this can be available through a web browser on pretty much any device. Um, so this is how you, you as a company can put the power of um, all, all of this in the hands of your employees, but set the measures that you want to uh, create um, in terms of number of desks or uh, occupancy of meeting rooms. Um, and the key thing about uh, a digital versus analog solution is that you can change this very dynamically over time. Um, we've heard of organizations talking about starting with um, uh, people being encouraged to come in maybe 25% of the time, so either one or two days a week, um, or identifying 25% or 50% of their workforce. Um, but of course, we all hope that over time that will flex. Um, and this platform enables um, that flexibility to be put into the hands of your users um, whilst the organization conforms to the guidelines. So just to wrap all of this up, um, we uh, have some documents. Um, Can I add Chris, go on? Yeah, there's just a slight difference. Why, why is it so important to have also the online possibility to book? Because the app is, is, is nice, but not everybody has a company phone, right? So if I don't have a company phone, why should I install an app of my employer on my private phone? And some people will probably do that, but some people will also not do that. And then if, if you have a solution which is only app-based, you're not able to get everybody in, you're not able to do the right measurements, you, don't, you will not exam, assemble all right data. And in our solution, you can use the app, but we are app independent. We are also fully online. We also work with sensors. So uh, we always have 100% of the right data and 100% of your people can use our solution. That's a big difference to all kinds of other solutions which are available. Excellent. Yeah, so Simon's just put up a quick note for us. So five different ways to book, mobile app, web portal, Outlook plugin, interactive uh, map, or actually at the desk or room itself. Um, That's the guru. Um, yeah, the guru, exactly. And, and um, of course, uh, the majority of those are either using your personal device or are contactless, um, which is another key thing. So just to wrap this up, we've got some documents that we've prepared, uh, which we can make available to people afterwards. Um, we have a couple of uh, return to work PDFs, um, which give some high level information about all of this. Um, on the right hand side is a PowerPoint slide deck that we've created, which is 15, 16 slides long. This goes through those um, government guidelines and helps um, organizations to identify how this solution can support um, those guidelines and a safe return to work. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, Chris and I can hang on the call. Uh, I haven't had any more that have come in since we've been talking, um, but just to remind you that there is a questions uh, link in the chat. Um, so if you do want to send any questions in, then feel free to do so. Um, if nothing arrives in the next minute or so, then we will wrap up. Um, but for those of you who need to go, um, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we will be following up with you and making this uh, recording available after the webinar today. Yep, thank you very much for joining. I hope to see you later. Thanks, Chris. Um, so if there are any questions that people would like to send in, then feel free uh, to post those. I haven't had any, any yet. I have had a comment saying, well done, very interesting, and thank you. So that's great. Thank you very much. Um, and another one of those in the uh, Zoom chat as well. Uh, I can see participants dropping off, so um, I think we'll probably wrap it up there. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone.